This video tutorial deals with the nomenclature for molecular compounds, also known as covalent compounds. So these two words are interchangeable for now. The problem with this naming system is that it's both very, very easy to use, but at the same time very, very difficult to know when you should use it. So here we go. Please, please, please only use this naming system if it's a nonmetal bonded to a nonmetal. So what I mean is, if an element on this side of the staircase, on this side of the periodic table, is bonded to another element on this side of the periodic table, then you may use this naming system. If you see a metal present, as soon as you see a metal that is present, you may not use this naming system. You should not use this naming system. So if you see any of these elements on this side of the periodic table being used, combined with anyone on this side, then no, you may not use this naming system. It is reserved only for those elements that are bonded on this side of the periodic table, non-metals only. All right, so let's move ahead. Uh, another interesting feature about this naming system is that it does not follow the zero-sum rule. You can't, because if they're both non-metals, all their valence charge is going to be negative anyway, so there's no way you can add up to zero. So instead, we use the Greek prefixes to tell us how many elements are involved in the compound. So make sure you memorize these ones. Mono means one, di, two, tri, three, tetra, four. Uh, most of these should be pretty straightforward. For instance, octagon, eight, pentagon, five, all right? Triangle, three. The only weird ones may be the one, uh, the two, uh, the seven. For those of you who are French, a lot of French people write down septa, but it's actually hepta. And then Nona and Deca. Now, in terms of the format, it follows this one, where you have the prefix, so one of these ones. So if my first element has four, then I have to say tetra and put the tetra in here. And then I look my second element, uh, again, you change it to IDE, so it must change its name. Uh, the second element gets whatever its number is. So if there were eight of that element, then you would say octa element, ID. So for instance, over here we got carbon, so I write down carbon. I see oxide, so I know it used to be called oxygen, so I'll put that in there. Now, how many carbons are there? Well, because there's no prefix, I assume there's just one carbon. Over here, though, it says di, and di means two. So I write down two, and there we have it, carbon dioxide, CO2. Over here, carbon, so again, I just write down carbon, and then I see an oxide again, so I write down an O. Now I check in the front, it says mono, meaning one. So I definitely leave it as one there, not two. So CO, carbon monoxide. Now you notice that the first carbon, the first element, never has a mono in the front, even though it has a, uh, it's a one carbon. So by convention, we never put a mono in the front, even if we want to, or it should be there. Instead, mono is reserved only for the second element. So if you ever forget this rule, just think to yourself, carbon dioxide. What sounds right? Monocarbon dioxide or carbon dioxide? Usually it's carbon dioxide is what we're most used to, so we don't have the mono for the first carbon in either situation. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, here we have carbon tetrafluoride. So I just write down carbon, carbon. And I know there's a fluoride. Fluoride used to be called fluorine, and the symbol for fluorine is F right there. Now, how many carbons? Well, it just says one carbon, so I leave it as one. How many fluorines? Tetra. So where's tetra? Four. So I write down CF4. Done. Next one, dinitrogen triiodide. I see the word nitrogen here, so I write down nitrogen. And I see the element iodide. It used to be called iodine, so I write down I for its symbol. Now, how many nitrogens? Two, because it says di. So I write down N2. Next it says tri, and tri stands for three. Hmm, I wonder why that circled there. So I need to write a three over here. So there we have it, dinitrogen triiodide. Same thing, if we go the other way around from chemical formula, chemical name, let's just write it in. So I see a three nitrogens, so three is tri, so I write down tri nitrogen, all one word. And then I see five oxygens. Well, five is penta, so I write down penta oxide. Because it used to be called oxygen, it turns into oxide. Now, there is a 
rule out there where it states that uh, if you have two vowels next to each other, you should remove the vowel from the prefix. So all these A's should be removed if there's two vowels next to each other. Over here, try nitrogen. There are no two vowels next to each other, so you just remove, you don't have to remove anything. But because it's this one over here, the A and the O are of two vowels, we should remove the A. So the, technically, it should be pentoxide. However, the problem is, depending on the textbook you're looking at, some textbooks ignore this rule, and some textbooks follow this rule. So I will accept either or. If you said pentaoxide or pentoxide, they would both be fine. I would accept them both. All right. Uh, the only exception, whoops, the only exception to this rule would be the uh, dioxide or monoxide over here. I definitely want you to remove the extra O, so it would have been monoxide. In this case, when there's two O's stuck together, you do remove the O from the mon, the mono. Otherwise, it'd be monoxide, and that definitely does not sound right. All right. So continuing on, uh, S stands for sulfur. Now, I will accept the British way of spelling it, the Canadian way of spelling it, sulfur with a PH, or I'll also accept sulfur with an F, the American way of spelling it, though I do prefer the Canadian way. All right, so either or is uh, perfectly fine, but my pre uh, preference is for the PH. So here we go, sulfur, then I have two oxygens, two is di, so I write down dioxide. Now in this case over here, there is two vowels, but we leave it. So as you can see, uh, the vowels do, uh, the vowel rule isn't always clean cut. So sometimes I just ignore it. All right, next one, NO, nitrogen. And since there's only one nitrogen, I just leave it as that. I don't say mononitrogen. And next one, there's only one oxygen. So I write oxide. But I know there's only one, so I have to write monoxide. Monoxide, not monoxide. All right, so this naming system is very, very, very easy to do, and that's why it is the one most students make a mistake on. Uh, the reason behind that was, again, like I said before, you can only use this naming system if it's two nonmetals, and that's it. You cannot use this naming system if there is a metal involved. As soon as you see a metal involved, cannot use this naming system. If you do, 